In this video, I'm going to show you how we calculate the dark matter content of a galaxy. Let's assume we have an edge-on galaxy. That's a distance of 10 megaparsecs from the Earth. And we've pointed the telescopes at different positions, at different distances from the center, different angles. And we find the velocity curve looks like this. Now our first step is to try and work out what we can just from the shape of the curve. Now, you'd expect the curve to look something like zero in the middle, because the mass is equally balanced on all sides, going up until you reach somewhere near the outskirts of the galaxy, and then going down. So it looks nothing like that. In fact, it looks quite the reverse. So the first surprise is, as you go towards the middle, the velocity seems to be getting very, very high, which is odd. That implies there's probably a lot of mass right in the middle to make things this close in and go very fast. In a normal galaxy, the mass is all spread out because it's in the form of stars. So maybe we're talking about a giant black hole in the middle here. We'll see in a second. Then the velocity goes down as you get further away from this whatever it is in the middle. And then it starts rising again. So that implies there must be a lot of matter out in the outskirts of the galaxy. So that's the rough shape we can talk about. So it looks like there's dark matter going out as far as 10 arc minutes away. It looks like there's also something rather big in the middle. So, let's try and work out how much mass there is in the middle. Let's pick a radius, for example, one arc minute, where the velocity is about 200 kilometers per second. First thing to do is to work out what physical distance one arc minute, a single quote there means an arc minute, refers to. Now we know that the physical distance is equal to the angle in radians times the distance. Distance is 10 megaparsecs, which is 10 times a million times 3.09 times 10 to the 16 meters, which comes out as 3.09 by 10 to the 23 meters. Theta is one arc minute. An arc minute is 1 60th of a degree. I mean to convert into radians, which is multiplied by pi over 180, which is 0 0.00029 radians. So multiply that by this, and you find that one arc minute at this distance corresponds to 9 by 10 to the 19 meters, which is 2.9 kiloparsecs. So our galaxy is about 10 kiloparsecs big, so 3 arc minutes. So this measurement is definitely well outside the galaxy, unless it's a very, unless it's a very big galaxy. OK, so we've got the angle sorted out. Let's estimate the mass. We know that we have to balance gravity, g m m over r squared equals m v squared over r. So the mass of whatever is orbiting cancels out. And we end up with the mass, that's the mass closer in than one arc minute, is equal to r squared goes up here, take one r off, so it's um, v squared r over g. Now we know the velocity, 200 kilometers a second, so 200,000 meters per second. We know r for one arc minute from here. g is just a normal gravitational constant. So at one arc minute, we end up with a mass of 5.4 by 10 to the 40 kilograms. Remember the sun is uh, 2 by 10 to the 30 kilograms, so this is um, about 20 billion times the mass of the sun. So that's a lot of mass in the middle middle few kiloparsecs of the galaxy. At 10 arc minutes, uh, the velocity is also about 200 kilometers a second. Um, but now r has gone up by a factor of 10, so it's going to be 5.4 by 10 to the 41 kilograms. Even more mass. So does that prove there's dark matter? Well, not really, because it could be that this mass is coming from stars. How can we estimate that? Well, we know the flux from, the, say, the central one arc minute. 
And let's assume that the mass to light ratio is four times the solar mass to light ratio, which is about 2 by 10 to the 4 kilograms per watt. So what we need to do is work out how many watts of luminosity we're getting from the central one arc minute. Now we know flux equals luminosity over 4 pi d squared, so the luminosity is just 4 pi d squared times the flux. So we know d, we know the flux, so we get the luminosity equals um, Ten to the thirty-five watts. Multiply by this, and we get a mass of two by ten to the let's see, thirty-five, thirty-six, seven, thirty, thirty-nine, thirty-nine kilograms, which is ten to the nine solar masses, which we can compare to this value here. What we can see is, assuming this assumed mass to light ratio of 4 is correct, and that's a fairly good average for populations of stars like our own Milky Way, the mass in stars is much smaller than the actual mass in the centre of the galaxy. So it looks like there is something dark in the middle here.